Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. On the day our story takes place, John Prescott's problem is a very ordinary one. An automobile and the problem of getting it rolling. But as the hours passed, he found himself concerned with things not so ordinary. more when I stopped shaking. You did come around there awfully fast. I didn't know what made me do it at the time. Now it seems like a fine idea. Trouble? My car won't start. Let's have a look at it. Turn it over. Okay. Nothing loose. Have you got gas? Well, I should have. This uh, gauge kind of acts up sometimes. As you say, gas gauges act up sometimes. Push out of the way and we'll go get some cash. All right. Sorry. No harm done. A little paint from your car scraped onto mine. My fault. I'll uh, straighten out your license plate and we'll be wrapped and ready. LK333. Meet uh, 5H3872. <laughs> That ought to serve as a proper introduction. Get in my car. I'll drive you to wherever you want to go. Uh, I'm John Prescott, from Boston. I'm Lila. Yes, sir. For. A cocktail to settle my nerves, a little talk, a chance to get better acquainted, uh, perhaps dinner. You no, know, I can't. I have to get back to my car. Oh, nonsense. Nothing can happen to your car. As for us, who knows? Well, no, nothing like that. Then let's have at it. 
The Azure Vault dares the assault of wings, and I, Icarus. Thank you. To a lovely lady. You have an easy way with words, John Prescott. A way uncommon with the Boston man. Throwback to my great-great-grandfather, Miles Prescott. A writer? The ship's captain. He sailed for the Orient, but was believed lost at sea with all hands. And was he lost? To the family. Twenty years later, he was found in Tahiti and refused to come home. <laughs> That's better. Gardenia's my favorite flower. Compliments you, sir. No be white like your skin, warm like your eyes, yet so mysterious, so beautiful, it's almost unreal. Let me talk to Morgan Dell. Get out of here. Well, I haven't finished my drink. Please, we must go right away. Hurry, please. What's it all about? Later, let's just get out of here now. Who's Morgan Debs? I heard the bartender ask for him on the phone. That's what panicked you, isn't it? Yes, now can we please go? I, I, I'll tell you about him later. Wait a minute. You were gonna tell me something, but you haven't said a word since we left the cafe except pull in here. Now what about it? You're in trouble, aren't you? Yes, but there's nothing anybody can do about it. Maybe there is. I, for instance, am uh, quite a remarkable fellow. Tell me, who is Morgan Debs? I can't talk about it here. Please drive away or I'll be in more trouble. I don't see how that's possible. Look at you, you're scared to death. Now, calm down. Tell me the trouble. We can work something out together. Make up your mind to it, because I'm not leaving until you do. All right. There's a road down the highway that leads to Lookout Point. I'll meet you there at 9 o'clock. Please be satisfied with that. No brush off. Promise? I promise faithfully. All right, then. Lookout Point at 9 o'clock. You be there. I'm coming after you. Morgan Debs or no Morgan Debs. I'll be there. Got your car all right? Where'd you park? Do you mind if we sit quietly for a few moments? A great part of my life is wrapped up in memories of Lookout Point. Now I come back here as often as I can. You're talking like a grandmother. I bet it wasn't too many years ago that you were giving the boys a bad time at high school dances. <laughs> and at college, wasn't I the one? Is that where you met Morgan Debs? No. Morgan's a much older man. I suppose we have to talk about him. If I'm going to help you. And I'm determined on that point. Then listen carefully, John Prescott. This spot, Lookout Point, was my favorite place in the world. It was here that I brought all my problems, and here that I came to celebrate my small triumphs. Then one night, something terrible happened. Morgan Debs, you sit tight. I'll slip into my armor and go face the dragon.
Mr. Prescott? Do I know you? I think you've heard of me. I'm Morgan Debs. I've heard of you. What are you doing up here? Delivering a message, Mr. Prescott. The young lady you're expecting will not be here. She agrees with me it is advisable for you to go on your way and make no further effort to see her. Why didn't the young lady give me the message herself? As I said, she would not be here. I don't know where you're getting all your information, but you're fouled up tonight. She's been here for the last 15 minutes. Lila? Lila? She was here a minute ago. What did you do to her? Nothing. I haven't moved from this car, as you very well know. You didn't have to. You've got a hold over her. She's scared to death of you. Why? Steady, Charles. We have no quarrel with Mr. Prescott. Now, why don't you just drive on and forget what happened here tonight? Why don't you tell me why I should? Now, remember, Charles, steady. A man can't lose a beautiful girl in the woods and just forget about her. Even if I assure you that she's all right? Then you do know what happened to her. Yes, I know. Well, at least tell me where I can reach her so I can call her or send a note or send flowers. I can't just run away like this. I'm afraid you'll have to, Mr. Prescott. Now, so far, no harm has been done. But if you persist in pursuing this matter, innocent people will be hurt. Now, you don't want that to happen, do you? Of course not. But on the other hand, I don't want to go through the rest of my life wondering what this is all about. I'm afraid you have no alternative. Now, just drive on. I'll take care of everything here. You put me in an awkward position. You put yourself in an awkward position. I'm trying to get you out of it. I think I should report something that happened tonight. I was at a place called Lookout Point with a girl, and she disappeared. Disappeared? You mean she ran away from you? I don't know. I was sitting with her in my car when a man named Morgan Debs drove up. I got out to talk to him. And when I looked for the girl, she was gone. Well, who's the girl? Lila. I don't know her last name. Did Morgan Debs know her? He must have. After she disappeared, he told me to forget about it. But if something happens to her... Well, what could happen to her? I don't know for sure. But I'll tell you one thing. She was afraid of him. Did she tell you why? She was just about to when he drove up. That's not much, Mr. Prescott. Morgan Debs is a powerful man in this community. I can't very well question him without something a little more substantial to go on. Isn't it enough to know that she was afraid of him? Well, I only have your word for it. If I could talk to the girl. Uh, can't you tell me something more about her? She was beautiful, blonde, blue eyes, drove a red sports car. Her name was Lila, and she used to live around here. You ought to be able to recognize her from that. Sorry, I don't. Maybe she was before my time. I've only been sheriff here a year. Where are you headed, Mr. Prescott? I was driving home to Boston. But I don't think I should leave until I make sure that the girl's all right. Well, you get her name, and I'll do what I can to help you. In the meantime, where will you be if anything comes up? I'll be trying to help myself. Man that can't find time for that is a coward. This is a particular girl. Blonde, blue eyes. Drove a red sports car. 
It stalled a few miles up the highway. She came here to get cash for it, remember? Well, I should from that description. But there's been no girl here. You sure? Yep. I left her here before dinner. Were you on duty then? I'm on duty all the time. Well, then you must remember her. You or somebody around here had to drive her back to her car with the gas. Wasn't me. I wouldn't forget a dish like that. Besides, I haven't sold a gallon of gasoline since late this afternoon. And that was to a kid on a motorbike. You must be doing something somebody don't want you to do. Uh, looks that way. Did you see who it was? No. I heard a car, thought it was business, came out here and found you. Did you see the car? Just the taillight as it drove away fast. Whoever it was knew their stuff. You're not marked up. Uh, not so you can notice it. Do you know Morgan Debs? Mr. Debs? Sure. If it wasn't for him, I couldn't keep this place open. You a friend of his? In a way. At least I'm getting to know him better. So we're closed. All I want from you is information. Remember me? Can't say I do. I was in here with a lady. Could be. I don't see everybody. Bar gets busy. We were here early. You wouldn't forget her. Beautiful blonde. Who was she? You say you were with her, don't you know? I'm trying to be very patient with you. We sat right there, ordered two martinis. You recognized the girl, went to that phone and called Morgan Debs. Who's Morgan Debs? <laughs> Quit clowning. The girl and I both heard you ask for it. All right, so I called Morgan Debs. A lot of people call him. He's a big man. The girl got scared when she heard his name. Why? Why don't you ask Morgan Debs? I'm working up to him right now. I'm asking you. I don't know. Everybody has dame trouble sooner or later. Why don't you have a night captain? This is no dame trouble. This is a lady. Now, who is she and what is she afraid of? I don't know. Her first name is Lila. What's the rest of it? I don't know, I tell you. You knew enough to make that phone call. I suggest you tell me why you still can. I can't, mister. I can't. Choke away from... I can't tell you. Kirby! Lila Kirby! Does she live around here? She did. A mile on the highway. Turn. Left. That's better. <laughs> Mrs. Kirby? Yes? I'm John Prescott. I hate to bother you at this time of night, but it's important that I talk to you. About what, Mr. Prescott? Your daughter. Come in, young man. What about my daughter? I was with her tonight. She left me. Well, that is, uh, we got separated somehow. I wanted to make sure she was all right. Of course she's all right, Mr. Uh, Prescott? Uh, John Prescott. How nice of you to bother. She's up in her room. May I see her for a moment? Well, it's awfully late, isn't it? Yes, and I apologize for intruding, but it's very important. If you'll wait in the study, I'll tell her you're here.
You're a difficult man, Mr. Prescott. That's what my mother always said. Beat him, she said, and he's stubborn as a mule. Wheedle him, and he's yours. I'm sorry about the beating. Very artistic job. I told Charles to keep an eye on you, that's all. May, uh, may I try a little wheedling, as your mother used to say? It's too late for that. I talked to Mrs. Kirby. She's gone upstairs to get Lila. She won't be back, and Lila's not upstairs. She's dead. Dead? She went off lookout point three years ago in her car. Was killed instantly. Well, that's impossible. I was with her tonight. I talked to her. What kind of a joke is this? No joke, unfortunately. Here. Read those. Go on, read them. Lila is dead. Who was I with tonight? I think you were with Lila Kirby. That's ridiculous. I can't explain it. This is the second time she's reappeared. She seems to be drawn to Lookout Point, the scene of the accident. And uh, when you get there, she disappears? Yes. I was hoping this time would be the end of it. According to these, you were with her. Yes. Lila's impulsive. I was the guardian for her father's estate, and there were things I had to discuss with her. And the night in question, she... she didn't like the things that I was saying, and... started to drive away. What about Mrs. Kirby? She's gone upstairs to get Lila. She is Lila's mother, isn't she? Yes, and my sister. Lila's death was a terrible shock to her from which she hasn't completely recovered. That's why I want to keep the news of these reappearances away from her. Anything that reopened the tragedy to her might... might result in her becoming completely deranged. I don't know. Maybe I am difficult, as you say. But it's hard to believe. Such a beautiful girl, so full of life. I met her this afternoon. Her car was stalled on the highway. Turned out she was merely out of gas. What kind of a car was it? A red sports car, low, rakish. Just the kind you'd expect her to drive. That's Lila's car, all right. But it's been lying at the foot of Lookout Point for three years. Hardly seemed worthwhile trying to have it towed away. Now you understand why I didn't want to tell you anything of this. LK333. Meet uh, 5H3872. Did John actually see Lila? How can we ever truly know? But of this we are sure. It is not the only case of this kind which has been reported. In my pursuit of these strange and unusual happenings, I have come across several other such occurrences. Experts have a name for this. But to define it is not to explain it. The explanation still lies beyond our present understanding. For how long? Who is to say? Please join me again for another journey into the world of the 
unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Good night. Thank you.